The one that I recommend is called a pickaxe. Designed for, the, for use in the United Kingdom, and that includes Australia and New Zealand, uh, at least in their focus, it is, the beauty of it being designed for use in schools in the United Kingdom is that it's made to be used by young people. And we're all, in many ways, young people when it comes to certain things. Superb support. And I mean that seriously. Uh, I make a comment in here someplace that when you go to forums to ask for help, sometimes the first thing they tell you to do is RTFM, which means read the manual. Or they don't want to hear about it if you haven't done a lot of legwork. The forums and things for these chips, most of the people that are on there are teachers. And they will help you from the very beginning. They're not going to call you an idiot first and then, you know. <coughs> Free manuals, free tutorials, free software. How's that? <coughs> Active and helpful forums on their web page and elsewhere on the web. The pickaxe manuals are free. And if you have access to a printer, you can print two or three hundred pages of stuff if you want a printed manual. There's also a book, Programming and Customizing the Pickaxe Microcontroller. It's available at Amazon, among other places. If you go to Amazon and look for pickaxe, it's the only book you're going to find. Best choice in terms of capability, you're going to be amazed at what this little chip can do. Ease of use, cost, support, and as far as support's concerned, I'll throw in two emails. Both of those will get to me. I've mentioned this at other seminars that I've done. You're going to invest an hour, hour and a half in me, listening to me today. I'll invest the same in you. I'll, I'll spend that much time answering questions for you individually. So if you have questions, have problems, you want to give it a try, I'll give you my phone number too. Actually, if you send me an email, I made the mistake, my, my phone number for my cell phone is at the bottom of every email. It's okay. All right. You're retired, you have time, right? I thought I had time. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Let's start with our first project. Flashing crossing lights. Design objectives. We're going to alternately flash two LEDs. Big deal. We're going to operate from battery power, because that's simple. We're going to alter the timing and other characteristics from software. In other words, by changing a program, not by changing parts. Then we're going to modify the circuit to start from a push button. First time, it's just going to run. Do other flashing things. All right, we got some other flashing things going on there. The parts that we need are right there. Total cost for all this stuff is about 10 bucks. The pickaxe chip, and I'll pass one of these things around here, and I'm going to move Mr. Microphone there so I don't trip over that. Uh, uh, I don't know. That belongs to Lewis. Uh, John, for some reason, wants to memorialize this, or so he's taping it. So I guess it is. This microphone? Yeah, it's going back. I don't know what's happening to it. All right, let me pass a couple of these around, if I may. This is the box of things that you need, so I'll pass that around. And here's another one of the pickaxe chips. Uh, these are dead ones. Occasionally, I kill some. And you're welcome to take it off. It's got eight pins. And I want you to also notice, at one end, there's a little notch in the chip. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can pass that around. Here's the parts. I like to work with three AA batteries. How many volts is that? Four and a half if they're regular alkaline batteries. If you're using rechargeables, it's going to be 1.2 volts per cell, so it's 3.6. That's a circuit board. You can buy those at Radio Shack. They're inexpensive, a couple of bucks. I always put my pickaxe chips in a socket because I do fry them occasionally. I'll connect the battery up backwards and the smoke comes out and they're no longer useful. Um, four resistors. Two of the resistors go with the LEDs. I think most of you that have worked with LEDs know that you have to put something called a current limiting resistor in series with one of the leads of an LED to keep it from eating itself. Um, and there are two. That's the programmer right there. Two resistors. That's it. And about ten bucks worth of stuff. If you've got a junk box, the only thing you're really going to have to buy is the pickaxe chip. Uh, eBay right now, including shipping, three for ten or eleven dollars. So they might be a hair over three bucks. The software is available from, hey, go figure, pickaxe.com. It's a free download. 
I think they ask for your name and your email, but that's no biggie. Okay. Other items you need. Any Windows-based PC with a serial port. I'm doing this whole presentation and everything on a seven-year-old IBM ThinkPad. Is that a state-of-the-art machine? Not really. It'll work on an old Windows 98 machine. It'll actually work on Windows 95, I believe. I haven't done that in so long, I'm not sure. Or if you have a new computer, you can use a USB to serial adapter. Now they bring some of their own problems. You're better off if you have a machine that has a straight serial port. You need a programming cable. I use an old mouse cable. All you need are three wires. And if you don't want to use a mouse cable, here's another one. This is just an extension cord. The programming cable, which I just broke, that's not good, is a DB9. A DB9 is a, uh, a serial connector and it's got three wires coming out of it. No electronics at all. And since I broke that one, do I have another? This is bad. Huh. I do have my soldering iron in the car, but you know what? I'm not going to take the time. Ah! Ah! Yes! I have another one. Teacher and Boy Scout. Okay. <laughs> But nothing magical other than we're going to be more gentle with this one now. Uh, it's three wires. That's it. Uh, transmit, receive, and ground. For those of you that are into RS-232. I'm going to plug it gently back into the cable. Okay. Uh, well, this, the, 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 the serial port has a male RS... Oh, it's a header. Uh, I use three pin headers. Uh, rather, you can use anything you want. But I use a three-pin header, like uh, plugs into the motherboard on a computer for your reset switch and things. Right. Whenever I throw away a computer, I salvage all those wires and use them. And I actually have a guy that recycles computers in Pittsburgh, saves them for me. <laughs> so I have like an infinite supply. You can also buy them if you wish. You can use any kind of connector you want. Doesn't matter. But yes, yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, soldering iron. If you're not a soldering person, I would suggest learning to solder. Experiment a little bit because it is the best way to, condu to put everything together. There's a fellow on the internet, Peter Anderson. His website is phanderson.com. He sells a pickaxe solderless development system for about 20 bucks. So if you just want to experiment and you're not quite ready to solder it, you can do that. And a four to five and a half volt power supply, I like again to use three double A's. If you use four fresh alkaline double A's, how many volts? At least. I've seen an alkaline put out more than 1.5 when it comes off the assembly line and you'll fry the chip. They're not happy much above 5.5, so be careful. Don't use a 9-volt battery. <laughs> okay. and, and I wouldn't recommend lithiums either because they tend to put out more volts. That's right. Yeah, that's why I like to stick with three. Yeah, works. yeah. Works. three works well. Uh, I put a note in here, don't use a 9-volt battery, 5.5 volts maximum. Okay, that is a schematic. Shouldn't bother you. You see those whenever you install a sound card. They're going to have some sort of a diagram of where things connect. That little chip that we're passing around is here. It has eight pins coming out of it. And remember I told you to look for a notch? That notch is right up here. And when you count pins on a chip, you find the notch and you count counterclockwise from the notch. So that's pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there are the connections. You connect pin 1 to 5 volts. Well, 4 point, you know, whatever you happen to be giving it that's less than 5.5. You connect pin 8 to ground. And I have to apologize to the people last year. Some of the pe folks I didn't realize didn't understand what ground meant. What's ground? That's the negative battery connection. I've just been doing this so long I kind of forget. So pin 1 goes to the red wire, the plus. Pin 8 goes to the black wire, the minus. 